Hello everyone. Welcome to Pasadena ISD CTE Summer Camp. It's virtual this year and my name is Troy Eccles and I'm an instructor at the Dr. Kirk Lewis Career and Technical High School. I teach the AV pathway, audio video production, and in that pathway, if you choose to uh, come to the campus and join my pathway, you will learn how to uh, work in a studio, work with cameras, work with uh, editing software, learn how to record music, um, learn how to, to work with audio equipment, all kinds of fun stuff. So this camp, what we're going to do is, uh, I call it uh, mobile movie magic. And what we're going to do is learn how to use our cell phones to uh, do movie production. So we're going to start out with um, learning the basics of camera shots and angles that filmmakers use. Then we're going to learn how uh, music affects the mood of a movie. Next I'm going to show options for setting up your cell phone for filming. And then uh, I'm going to show you guys how to set up this remote for your phone by Bluetooth so that you can use this key fob to record movies uh, without having to hold your phone. And next uh, we're going to learn about uh, the basics of the video editor software that I'm going to ask you guys to download and then we are going to um, learn about fair use and royalty free items like music and video and pictures so you can use that in your, your uh, movie productions. Then uh, we're going to learn how to import your clips into the video editor, learn how to edit clips and add music and titles, some basic editing inside of this little app and uh, then we're going to learn how to export your videos through the app to uh, websites for you to share. So the first thing that we're going to talk about are camera shots and camera angles. So whenever you watch movies, pay attention to the different shots and angles that you see in movies that I'm about to show you here because there's some standard shots and uh, camera angles that all directors use to get feeling in a movie and to tell a story. The first is establishing shot. So this here sets up this, the place that your movie is based. Uh, so imagine this movie here is based in the Roosevelt Hotel. You know, it's a murder mystery and they're trying to figure out who done it. So all the, all the suspects are in the hotel. Or, you know, if this is a Harry Potter movie, that would be Hogwarts. So they'd have a picture of Hogwarts. Next is a long shot. So, for example, this is where your character's scenes are based. So they're showing the landscape, the land that they live in. So uh, those really far away shots that they show in the Harry Potter movies, and you have Hogwarts on a hill, and then you see the whole landscape and the lake and everything around it, that would be a long shot. Next, you go to filming people. This here's a full shot. So in a full shot, it has the whole person in the frame of video. So their head's close to the top, their feet are close to the bottom. This is a three-quarter shot. If you notice, the shot is from their knees to just above their head. Medium shot, just below the waist to the top of the head. You know, and they use this like this guy sitting on a park bench. You don't know what he's thinking, but you know, there could be voiceover right here of him thinking something. A medium close-up. This is just below the breastbone to the top of the head. You know, this here example, it's a teacher in front of a class, so they're they're more focused on her and what she's saying and her hands, so that because a lot of people talk with their hands and they use it to give, convey emotion. So this picks up the hands and the face and the mouth. This is a close-up. So this here you see a lot in news broadcasts whenever they're interviewing somebody after an accident or something. Uh, something's taking place and they're, they're getting someone's opinion. So they have a really tight close-up and it's from the shoulders to the top of the head. And they do this because you want to focus on the person and what they're saying. You don't want all the hand movements, you don't want things distracting you, you just want the facts. Next is extreme close-up. This shows people paying attention. So if you, you want to 
get a get a sense of you know what people are thinking or see if they're paying attention to something in a scene um, you can you can use this to um, show when someone's thinking about something and they're angry and they can transition over to another scene that shows what happens um, they use this a lot this is a two shot so two shots are used a lot in shows if there's two main characters they'll show you know the two people sitting there listening to the same thing and see how one's reacting versus how the other is reacting this is over the shoulder over the shoulder they use a lot in reality shows when people are talking back and forth to each other they use it a lot in movies too whenever there's two people talking about something so and they'll switch back and forth so the the opposing shot would be over the lady with the curly hair uh, and her talking to the the face of the other lady that's near the the camera on this shot right here so over shoulder is really important for conversations so now we're going to get into camera angles. Camera angles put a lot of feeling into a movie. This here is a high angle. This here, uh, you can see someone's coming up the steps. Kind of, kind of gives a sense of um, Okay, now we're getting into camera angles. Camera angles are used, they use different angles for, for feeling in a film. And to, to give emotion, and uh, it's, it's what makes films dramatic is how it's shot. And a lot of it's done by different angles. Like this here, this is a high angle shot. It's from above looking down, but it can, it can be like a, a suspense shot someone's coming up the stairs to see what's happening upstairs they hear noise so it could be a really good in a, in a scary scene or there's a chase scene or there's something going on the high angle shots really good shot for action there's a low angle shot this one here you can imagine that they're looking at some imaginary monster that's coming over the horizon and you know they're they're looking up even though they're not, they're using the camera to make it look like they're looking at something bigger than what's there. This is an oblique angle shot. So this one here, if you look, it's tilted and it's also off angle. It's not directly in front of the person. This is a real artistic shot. They use this a lot in music videos because there's a lot of movement and feeling in the shot. And, you know, they don't have the person looking at the camera. They're filming them off to the side and at an angle, and it's very artistic. This here is a shot of just framing heights. It's a guide. So this here, it shows you that you, where your head shot is, your close-ups, your medium close-ups. Um, if you look here, this one here, the, the three-quarter shot, where it's at the knees, this is also called the cowboy shot back in the westerns and also if you look at uh, old posters from wartime there were real heroic shots of people and it was from the knees up and it's supposed to be a very heroic stance so they, they sh to, to shoot people from the knees up and you can see them you know flexing or you know um, on old movie posters for the westerns they had this this image a lot um, but they called it a cowboy shot because it was very heroic, but it's also just three-quarter shot. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is music and how music can set the mood of a movie. So a lot of movies have composers that write music for the different characters. And whenever you put music to your movies, you have to think about what you're showing on the screen and how the music goes with the scene. So you don't want to have somebody in a car chase and playing romantic music. It just doesn't go together. So, um, for example, I'm going to show a few, few clips from one of my favorite movies, Indiana Jones and the, uh, uh, and the Lost Ark. Mm -hmm. So uh, this here is Indiana's theme. And you can see, you know, whenever he's on the screen, uh, they play this theme. It's kind of recurring throughout the movie. 
So uh, it sets the mood for the character. So a very heroic sounding clip to go with that character. So next we're going to listen to you know the movies about the Lost Ark, Raiders of the Lost Ark. So this here's the clip for the Ark, and I'm going to hit play and listen to how mysterious it is. You don't you don't know where he's going, what he's looking for. He's looking for the Ark, but it's a mystery. So you can imagine this without music. It's just a guy laying on a floor looking at a book, wiping the floor. You put some music on it, it gets more intense. So, music's very important in your movies. Uh, I'm going to show one more clip. This here is a scene that has no music at all. And it's okay to not have music because sometimes you want the story to be told. And you want people to really listen to what the story is about because it sets up what the whole movie is about and they don't want music to distract them. So I'm going to scan forward in this a little bit. So, this so this story sets up the whole movie about he, how Indiana Jones is going to go find the Lost Ark. So, always be mindful of your music. You need heroic music for your heroes. You need action music for your, for any action scenes. Uh, you need mysterious music for any uh, anybody that's uh, any scenes like you're looking for something and you can't find it or there's a ghost or something you've, you've got to have music that fits the mood okay so I'm going to show you guys now uh, how to install the application that we're going to use okay I'm going to show you guys now how to install the application that we're going to use we're going to go to the Play Store we're going to tap in the search bar and we're going to type in Power Director I've already searched for it, so it's already there, and it's Power Director, all one word. We're going to install this. I have it installed already, so I just have to open it. But you install it, whether you're in the, the App Store on Apple or your Android Play or your Google Play Store. And then once it's completed, you're going to tap Open. We're not going to open it yet because that's going to be later in the video. Next we are going to learn how to set up our key fob so the first thing I want you to do is I want you to turn the key fob on there's a switch on the side it's going to blink fast blue the next thing I want you to do is to go into your Bluetooth settings open Bluetooth and then scroll down to the available devices in this area you're going to see AB Shutter 3. That is this device. You tap on that and it will pair your device and it will stop blinking. So it's not blinking anymore and if you scroll up it says AB Shutter 3 is connected. And then click done. So once you have your key fob paired with your phone you can set your phone anywhere, on a tripod, on a table, on the box that we made, uh, that I made. And then once your phone is in video mode or in camera mode, you can use your key fob to start and stop your video or take a picture. What's really cool about that is 
you can set this down and be up to 30 feet away and get really professional looking video because you're not holding your phone. It's not shaking. It's not moving around. You can actually, if you have it on a tripod, have somebody actually turn it and do a smooth turn like they're filming in the movies and you can do that from your cell phone and not have to mess with touching the phone with this fob. The other cool thing is you can take this camera and set it in a static position. Static means still and you can do stop motion video and stop motion movies so like uh, Nightmare Before Christmas or Coraline or one of those movies. Uh, Lego movies uh, CG but it's the same concept of like stop motion and they're moving the characters. So you can take this, set it up on a, above a table, and you can put Hot Wheels and Legos and move them and take photos of them without moving your camera and actually make them move across the table one picture at a time. Now whenever you put it into your video editor, you're putting each picture and you have to make them short enough so that they're not staying in one place too long. So you want them to look like they're moving. So it actually has to be in the timeline, you know, a really a fraction of a second but you have enough of those pictures within a second and you play it, it looks like they're moving. So um, there's some really cool things that you can do using this key fob with your phone. Okay, so now we're going to learn some different options for setting up your uh, cell phone for filming. Uh, I went on Amazon and I bought this little device here. There's a shoe from a tripod on it. Tripods come with shoes and it has a little screw in it that screws into this mount. So I'm going to take this device and I'm going to mount it onto a shoe that then I can put onto a tripod. The cell phone actually slides in to the tripod mount and you can attach this to the top of your tripod and then set this wherever you need for filming. Some tripods tilt so you'd be able to do shots that are like this or down shots. Uh, you could set your camera tripod up on stairs. Uh, my house has stairs. I could actually get a high angle shot from stairs by putting this up above my head. Um, so it gives you some flexibility and some options. This here was about ten dollars on Amazon. Uh, there are some packages. I found one for $17.99 that has light, a light included and another key fob and a mini tripod. So you would actually have two of these because I don't know how durable these are, but it might be good to have an extra. For $17.99 I didn't think it was too bad. Another option that you can do if you don't want to buy that, you could just take a regular box and what I did is I took my cell phone, I put it on the box, I outlined it, I don't know if you can, you can see, there is the shape of a cell phone on there. And then you poke four holes outside of the outline and these rubber bands, these rubber bands, they come on produce. So you can get these rubber bands from the grocery store. Uh, I think broccoli is bundled with these so that you can end up with a couple of these rubber bands. And what I did is I put pencils and pens on the inside to hold the loops of the rubber bands so that then I could take my cell phone, flip it where the camera is out, and then I can actually attach my phone to this box. And what this allows you to do, whenever it's like this, your phone is secure, it's not going to go anywhere, and you can set this box down on tabletops or on a coffee table. Um, you could put um, the flaps out the back and you can tilt it so that you can get some shots, put your camera on the ground and set this on the ground. Um, you can put a pillow behind it. You know, you can, you can do a bunch of different stuff. You can just set this up at different angles and then you have, instead of a tripod, you have another type of camera mount. So now we're going to learn the basics of PowerDirector. 
So on your phone, open PowerDirector. So it is wanting me to do a subscription. I do not want to do a subscription. I'm just going to go back because I just want to do the free video project. So you're going to click New Project. And you can name your project whatever you want to name it. <clears throat> Below that, you're going to select your video aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is how it looks. Um, like the, the screen that this is projected on is a 16 by 9 screen, so it's widescreen. So if you see, you can do a widescreen 16 9, or you can do an upright 9 16, which is like this. That's 916 or 1 to 1. 1 to 1 is just square video. Just like the preview windows have in the very top, that's a square 1 to 1 video preview. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose 169 and then here is our app, uh, our, our project timeline inside our app. So our options are we can choose video and we can put it into our timeline. So once you film your video using your key fob, if you touch camera, all of your videos that you have filmed show up. So there's all the videos on my phone. So what we're going to do, I'm going to pick one, pick a video, and as you can see I'm picking this video uh, towards the right and a plus sign showed up on the video and I'm going to touch that plus sign whenever I touch that plus sign it's going to put it into my timeline down here in the bottom so I can now look and I can look at this video so this video is of the Thunderbird, Thunderbirds flying around close to the school well I don't know if you noticed but at the very beginning of the video there is a building in the way. Well, I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll to where that building's not in the way and then that jet comes in and then I'm going to touch my project and I'm going to touch the slider and move this to where I have my jet coming in that I want to see. Whenever I let go of the slider and the slider is right here. Whenever I touch that slider, I can move it around. And it'll even go back to where I had it in the beginning. If I go, if I, if I cut off too much, there's a little arrow right here. You touch that arrow and it will undo what you just did. And it will put it back to having the building in the scene. So I want to go about right there, so I'm going to look on my timeline, see where this see where this blue bar is, and then I'm going to touch and move my video clip to where I want it, which is about right there. The end of the video clip. So they're fine, they go behind the building. I don't want that. So as soon as that building comes in, I'm going to look on my timeline, and it's at 28.8 seconds. I'm going to touch and highlight my clip and then I'm going to grab this bar with my finger and I'm going to slide it to 28.8 which is right there. Now I do not have the building in the beginning and the end of my clip. So now that I have a video clip in and the same thing works with photos, you put your photos in and then you use that slider to shrink it down to, to whatever time you want and you can do a slideshow grandparents love slideshows. You can take and do a slideshow of photos of yourself and put music underneath it and they'll love that. So that's a great gift idea just to let you know. So I'm going to go back to my video clips which I touch this button right here and then I'm going to touch camera again. I'm going to scroll through and I'm going to do another video clip of the jet's fine, and I'm going to touch this add button, 
it added it down here on my timeline. If you notice, there's this little box down here. This box is your transition. So right now, if I scroll back and then I touch up here in the corner to preview and hit play, if you watch, here come the jets. It hits that transition and it just jumps to the next scene. So I'm going to hit pause. Pause and play are down here on the bottom. I'm going to scroll back to in front of this transition. I'm going to touch that transition box, this little box. I'm going to touch it. These are all the different transitions that are in this video editor. So I just want to do a nice cross dissolve. Cross dissolve is where it fades from one to the other. There's all these others. It does burning, dissolve, crystallize. You scroll over, there's a bunch of them. A flash, there's one that's uh, white noise, so it looks like a TV channel changing. So I'm just going to do a cross dissolve because I'm old fashioned. You touch it, it highlights it, then you add it, and it's going to put it into your video, and your icon is going to change. So now I can come back and I can hit the play button, and there goes my jets. And it's going to cross dissolve. See, it wasn't choppy, it just it was a smooth transition. So, and I'm going to scroll to the end. Well, there's the buildings again, and the Thunderbirds. So they're flying, and then there they are doing a big heart, and it's going to end. So I don't want it to end there, I want it to end a little before. So once again, I'm going to highlight my clip, and I am going to drag it to where I want it to end. I want it to end on that heart. So where this blue line is now, That's the end of the clip. So at the end, now what I can do is I can add credits. So if you touch this little stacked paper here, these are all the different credits that are in this, this uh, editing package. There's one called Roller Coaster, and the text flies in. There's one called Flocking, where it flies in together. There's just an end credit where it scrolls up, just like in the movies. So you just pick one. I'm going to pick one. I'm going to highlight this one right here, the roller coaster. I'm going to add it. And if you notice, it jumped in and dropped down to the end of my movie. Well, you tap that, tap to edit, and you can type. And you can put a movie by Troy. Eccles, not evils. A movie by Troy Eccles. And then I'm going to hit the little check mark. When I hit that check mark, that's going to be the text. So now I can go back and check it. So I scrolled back, I moved my, with my finger, I'm just moving with my finger, going back and forth, and I'm going to hit play, and that's what it does. It does a movie by Troy Eccles, and then it leaves. So that's how you do basic clip editing, importing of your movie clips or your photos how you do some titling. Now we're going to do some music. So we're going to tap this little button up here with the film clip and the music and we are going to go to the little button up here at the top that is your music button and we're going to go to I'm just going to tap this music because this is going to be music that's built into the program and I'm going to do this time to travel. So I'm going to scroll all the way back to the beginning of my movie and I'm going to tap time to travel and I'm going to hit the little plus button. If you notice, there's my, my audio right there. It dropped into my timeline. So now I'm going to hit play up in the top corner. Now there's music with the jets.
So, do you see how this move, this audio clip now, though, is too short? It doesn't play for the whole length of the movie. So what you do is, you put your, you put your blue search bar right at the end of your music, go back to your music, browser, go to music, and choose what music. You can change music or keep the same song. I'm going to keep the same song. I'm going to add it. It drops it in again. So now I have my music lengthened and it's still a little short. So now I'm going to add the music one more time. So the music is back. It's, it's going to go all the way to the movie but now it's too long. So I'm going to tap my movie track, my, my music track, highlight it. You get the same slider down here in the end that you can take your music and you can drag it to the end of your movie. So now, just to show you, so here's our music. And then it finishes. So when your movie finishes, you notice that the audio just stops. So what you do to fix that is, you highlight your clip, and then, so we're going to highlight our clip, there's a little pencil that shows up in the bottom. We're going to touch pencil, and we're going to go to volume, we're going to touch volume, and if you notice, there's fade in, fade out. We're going to fade out because we just want the music to softly end. So we're going to touch fade out. And you can also increase or decrease your audio if it's too loud in your video. Once we have fade out, we're going to say OK. Now, we're going to play our clip again. So here goes our clip. credits and then the music fades out it just doesn't stop okay so you've learned how to basically use the editor there's some other tools and some other fun stuff in here and I want you guys to play with it but you know like you can highlight your video clip and it gives you the edit pencil and there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do to these video clips and play with them now video and audio is fun but you want to make sure you're not violating copyrights so you have to use music and video that's free Either you film it, or you get it from a site, um, a, a royalty-free media site that you can Google, and Google royalty-free media, and you can pick up music and videos to put into your, your movies that you don't have to pay anybody for that music or video. If you use a song off of the internet, or off of uh, the radio, and you try and put that in your movie, and then you upload that to YouTube, YouTube will actually take it down because you didn't pay for that music. So you want to make sure and use royalty-free media. Uh, it's just better and safe to do that. They have all kinds of music. You can choose different stuff, scary music. Um, this music here is free. Uh, it sounded real like Top Gunny. They, they have all kinds of free music that kind of sounds like what you hear in movies already. So you can definitely go in and find a dramatic piece or uh, an action piece of music and you can put it into your movies that way but you want to be sure that you're doing the right thing and not taking somebody else's work so um, what you can do uh, you can't use movie clips and use the audio that's with the movie clips but if you've seen any of movies uh, movie clips where they do lip dubs and they change the words of what people are saying and they make these funny videos um, they call it bad lip dubbing um, you can take those and as long as you're changing the media to your own you're taking the the voices that were already on the films off and you're putting your own stuff on there then it becomes your work because you're doing a parody um, you're having fun with it and that that's that's 
um, free to do. Um, you can do that. You don't have to pay anybody for the movie clip as long as you're changing it and making it your own work. So, with all that, I uh, hope you enjoyed the course. And, um, you know, always refer back to this if you have any questions. And um, be sure that if you want to be in the AV production pathway at the Career and Technical High School, apply for it because you can apply for it in eighth grade. And then, ninth grade, you can go to the Kirk Lewis Career and Technical High School and be in that pathway and end up with certifications in audio video. So thank you very much, and have a great day.